Welcome to this tutorial where we're going to discuss the differences and similarities between traditional and freeform crochet. There are actually a lot of similarities. Everything that you can do with traditional crochet, you can also add to your freeform crochet projects. All the stitches are the same, but since there are no rules with freeform crochet, you can always try to invent new stitches or techniques or combine different stitches to create something new. The stitches are basically the same. Now the most traditional thing with traditional crochet has to be a granny square. So let's create one. Now I'm going to begin with a slip stitch. This is almost always the beginning of any crochet project that I've tried. First of all, crochet six chains. And the pattern is three double crochets two chains and repeat this four times throughout the entire round. Now you're going to have to do three double crochets and two chains and this is basically the whole pattern with a granny square. With the traditional crochet project you create according to a pattern that is predictable and produces the same outcome every time. You don't have to think so much because you will mostly do the same repetitive task over and over again. This can be very calming for your mind. You can compare the crochet stitches to the letters in the alphabet. There aren't many letters in the alphabet, but still they are used to create all the books. You're able to create any text you want with those letters. The same goes with the crochet stitches. So the magic lies in the combination of the letters or stitches that you use. And you don't have to think so much if you already have a pattern at hand. You can just create. Now you can see that a pattern starts to emerge. And if you have a traditional crochet pattern with some fun stitches, you can always try it out in your freeform crochet project. You're going to be surprised at how quickly you will evolve with your freeform crochet art if you try out new things from the traditional crochet world. The main difference is that you alternate as you go along with freeform crochet. The freeform crochet is more of an intuitive art form, so I highly encourage you to try out new things when the thought enters your mind. It's a meditative practice as well as a creative endeavor. Now let's change colors for the next round. Start in one of the corners and create three chains to substitute the first double crochet. Now continue with two double crochets and then two chains. Then three double crochets. With the granny square you always increase in the corner by creating three extra double crochets. As you can see I'm altering the set of three double crochets and the two chain stitches. Always three double crochets and two chains. And this is what traditional crochet looks like because you follow an established pattern and the end result will look the same every time. So it's a bit like improv music versus playing from the sheet, if that makes sense. Now let's do the invisible edge technique. I've shown this technique several times in previous videos. Basically you create a stitch so that the edge looks seamless and tidy. Now we can start to see that this is going to be a granny square. So let's do the third round with the same color as the first round. 
the granny square is a great scrap yarn project but if you want to create something coherent like a sweater or something like that you might want to ensure that you have all the yarn that you need for your entire project when you create with traditional crochet. This is oftentimes not the case with a freeform crochet project. Since there are no rules you can make it up as you go. Do whatever you want and use whatever scrap yarn you have at your disposal. So now the granny square is almost finished. As you can see, the previous two chains created this hole where I can now conveniently crochet my three double crochets like this. the invisible edge technique again. And there is our granny square. Now let's get started with a freeform crochet project. You start the same way with a slip stitch and a couple of chains. Now I can just decide on the spot how I want to continue with this. Maybe I can experiment with some half double crochets. Now I want to try and create an oval shape. With the traditional crochet you already have an established pattern so you don't have to think about compensating with increases. Well in freeform crochet this is almost always the case. So if you want to learn one technique to be able to be really skilled at freeform crochet it would be to learn when to increase and when to decrease. This is something you learn by doing, so experiment a lot. As you can see, this stitch needs to pivot in order to stand up straight, so to speak. And to do this, you increase with a couple of stitches in the same previous stitch. If it's too tight, you can continue to increase a couple of stitches in the next stitch as well. Now you can see that we almost have it in our control. Let's try one more, like this, in order for the surface to remain flat.
Now we can start going back with some double crochets and some half double crochets. And when you're finished with this round, you can continue to design your project in any way you want. Okay, so let's create another round with this color. You don't have to decide exactly what you want to create, since this is an impromptu technique. This is the magic with the freeform crochet. You don't have to decide what the end result is going to look like, and you can just play. So now I've decided to go one round with only half double crochets. As you can see the stitch pivots a bit to the left. So we'll have to increase one or two stitches. With practice you'll be able to easily detect when to decrease and when to increase during a project in order for the surface to remain flat. And now let's finish this round with the invisible edge technique again. And there you have a couple of examples. I'm doing a couple of chains and then going back with a couple of half double crochets. And then I'm going to secure it and crochet a couple of stitches in the back loop. If you want, you can try changing colors as well. You can just change the color like this and start crocheting with the second color. This is going to be some kind of pattern, I guess. Kind of regular, but not anything that is decided beforehand. And we can just shift the color. Just remember to let the other color run along.
and let's try out a third color. Just bear in mind that you have to let the first color run along so that you can pick it up whenever you need it the next time. The similarities are stitches increase and decrease. And the differences pattern versus chaos, order versus chaos, freeform impromptu versus patterns, and established rules. So what do you need to know with the freeform crochet that you necessarily don't need to know with the traditional crochet? The most important, I would say, is the pivot technique, as I call it. You need to be able to intuit if you need to increase or decrease by looking at your project. With practice, this will be very easy for you. You need to be able to decide when to increase and when to decrease by heart if you want a flat surface as well as if you want to create a sculpture or form with freeform crochet. Whether you like freeform or traditional crochet, the stitches are the same. So you can always learn a traditional crochet technique and then integrate what you learn to try it on to your freeform crochet project. If you want to create a flat surface, you need to check once in a while so that the project doesn't morph into unwanted shapes. I hope you enjoyed this short comparison between freeform crochet and traditional crochet. And I also hope you learned something new and that you are willing to give freeform crochet a try. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.